This video is a summary of the main ideas in the essay What is Art? by Leo Tolstoy. First of all, I would like to clarify that Tolstoy is very male-centric. Um, a lot of his statements are towards men, the unity of men, for example. I'm going to render all these expressions. I will try to render these expressions into the gender neutral. Well, let's dive in. And I think it would be interesting to start with the, the, the classification of what is good art and bad art in the eyes of Tolstoy. He, he does mention in the essay specific examples of what he thinks is good art and bad art. Uh, probably a note... Uh, uh, um, noteworthy mention is Wagner. He absolutely hates Wagner. Um, uh, he spends a whole chapter describing a visit that he did to the opera in Moscow to see one of his plays, um, the, the Ring of the Nibelung. Um, uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. And he just really didn't like it. Um, one of the reasons he didn't like it is the exclusivity, the idea that you have to sp speak German in order to understand this opera, the idea that you have to have a, a degree in ancient German uh, folk tales in order to, to even begin to understand what the opera says. Uh, Tolstoy takes a big issue with that kind of art. Uh, he criticizes also a, what he calls modern or, or, or new French poets, Baudelaire, Rimbaud, Verlaine, Mallarmé. Uh, he actually quotes them at length, and he, he just really doesn't like that type of art. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that a lot of the modern art, he, will, he, will, he wouldn't see it with good eyes. Uh, interestingly enough, he also buckets himself uh, his earlier works as as bad art, as falsification of art. Uh, in the good art bucket, uh, there is Victor Hugo. He has a, a big admiration for Victor Hugo, particularly Le Miserable. Um, back, Mozart, Beethoven, but only his earlier period. Big admiration for the Greek epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey. It is noteworthy that he sees the Bible as a piece of art. It is also interesting that he mentions the Vedas as a piece of art that he admires, um, considering how Eurocentric uh, his environment was. So to start in the, in the idea to classify art between, let's say, good art and bad art, um, it is, in, it is useful to start by an analogy that he makes with food. And in his view, a lot of, a lot of what is being understood as art in his time is just a disguise of art. It just has the appearance of be, being art, but it's not really art. In the same way that sometimes food can look like food, can even taste like food, but it's not really food in the sense that it's not nutritious. He uses the same analogy. Um, or, or think of a parent who has a child and this parent uh, only gives tasty food to the kid. Well, the kid is likely to fall um, to in some form of mal malnourishment because not the most nutritious food is necessarily the most tasty food. Uh, there is some overlap, but it's not a 100% overlap. And to, for Tolstoy, th th there seems to be a similar situation with art. In the case of art, the tasty uh, will take the place of beauty or pleasure. And Tolstoy traces back this, this new philosophy of art to the Renaissance. And it's in the Renaissance where uh, people start considering art as a vehicle of beauty and as a vehicle of pleasure. And it is during the Renaissance that uh, princes start 
princesses and kings start spending a lot of money uh, creating piece of, pieces of art for their entertainment. Um, but Tolstoy is sharp enough to see that this is not a new quote unquote development, but rather what the what the what was happening in the Renaissance is just a revival of Greek thinking, or at least a, a segment of Greek thinking, and the worship of beauty and the wor worship of pleasure. Um, so let's let's dive a little bit into his definition of art. Um, for Tolstoy, art is primarily a form of communication. For him, art is the highest form of language. And that's really important. If we, if we understand that connection between language and art, one understands the power of art. Because if we think of our culture, if we think of our society, and its relation to language, we realize, we realize that language is tremendously powerful. It is through language that we give to the younger generations our memories, our values, our religion, our culture. So in the same way, it is through art, the most efficient vehicle of communication that we provide the younger generations our values, our history, our our feelings so art plays an enormous role in society and Tolstoy calls art food for the soul I want to spend some time talking about religion um, and the reason I want to do that is because it is mentioned quite a bit during the essay um, and and also it speaks a lot about Christian religion and, and has some ideas about the relation between religion and art. And I think that is the part of the essay that is most easily misunderstood. Um, it has to be understood in the context of the personal crisis that he had after turning 50 shortly after finishing Anna Karenina, Tolstoy falls in a very deep depression, a suicidal depression, and he emerges from that depression with a, with a very unorthodox view on religion and on particularly Christianity. He has a very tolerant view towards other religions. He studied other religions in depth, particularly Buddhism, and Hinduism, um, but he concludes that the religion that best articulates his ideas are is Christianity. But probably most important for the listener is to understand that when Tolstoy says uh, a Christian art, what he it could be it could be rendered as an art of love. For him, the most important idea in Christianity, the central idea of Christianity, is the idea of love. And if we, if, if we have a Christian art, it's an art that promotes love. Uh, another interesting point about the relation between religion and art is that for Tolstoy, there is no such thing as a human being without religion. Everyone has a religion, every society has a religion. And given that art is the highest form of communication, it is through the art that is considered valuable within a society that one can tell what is the religion of that society. So a society that is corrupt will have an art that is equally corrupt. A society that worships money will have an art that equally worships money. Let's move into the, let's say, final classification of art. Uh, one will be tempted to classify between good and bad art. 
but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to use the words good art and bad art because I'm trying to avoid some of the subjectivity um, that comes with that kind of terminology. I'm going to use a different kind of framework. I'm going to use unhealthy art and healthy art. That classification is mine. It's not Tolstoy's. But I think it, it conveys uh, what he's trying to say. So what is unhealthy art? Well, simply, uh, simply put, is the art that divides people. Is the art that hurts people. Is the art that promotes hatred. Is the art that promotes envy. Is the art that promotes lust. Or to use Spinoza's framework, is the art that promotes sad emotions. Healthy art, on the other part, on the other hand, is the art that unites people, is the art that heals people, is the art that promotes love. Um, the examples on healthy art are, are, are his, the examples on unhealthy art are mine. Let's move on to the, to the last slide. Uh, which could also be misunderstood or, or is maybe not misunderstood, but it's, it's a bit of a, of a very strong statement by Tolstoy. Uh, fundamentally, his idea is that there should not be professional artists. His vision of the future, and he does use that expression, the future, the future art and the future artist. His vision of the future is a society of laborers. And it is the labor themselves who will create the piece of art in his free time. Because in the ideal society that he envisions, the laborer will have artistic education in his primary school. The laborer will learn the basics of music, the basics of painting, the basics of writing. And he won't engage in art in a professional manner, but rather do art out of a higher call. It will, uh, they will do art out of a higher need to communicate certain feelings that they have inside and they need to, to share with the rest of people. And the fulfillment of that need will be enough payment for, for that artist. Another way to, uh, to see the, the problem that Tolstoy is trying to tackle here is the problem of the celebrity artist. He takes a big issue with that. He takes a big issue with the idea that art should be in the hands of the very few, that art should be expensive, and, and that an artist could be making a hundred times, a thousand times more than an agricultural worker. So in his view, everyone will be participant of art and everyone will be able to publish art and art won't be either, won't be, won't be a, a merchandise. Uh, I don't know the specifics of his ideas of whether art could be sold and, and bought, but he definitely has an issue with the idea of art being a huge business. And, and he disencourages the idea of a professional artist. I'm going to leave you with the with a, a sentence from chapter 19. Until the dealers are driven out, the temple of art will not be a temple. Thank you for listening.